Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. You probably expected my father, but today you get a surprise. It's me, Junior Deals. My father has previously criticized the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D for being overpriced considering what it offers. Today I will answer a common question many people have when they already own an older AM4 system. Does the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D justify its purchase premium over the 5700X? We have multiple games tested using the Ryzen 5 1600X, Ryzen 7 2700X, 5700X, and the 5800X 3D to show the differences and improvements made over the past 6 years. Today's video is brought to you by Ewin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our Ewin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. First, a quick note on my background and where I fit into the channel. I finished high school in 2022 and started working with my dad at that time. I have been running benchmarks, editing videos, and filming videos on our Tech News Network channel. Today, I'm filming my first solo video on our main Tech Deals channel to answer the question as many of you have asked. Which is the better upgrade deal for existing AM4 owners? The 5700X or the 5800X 3D? For many people, the AM4 platform was very promising in supporting future CPUs. However, because people have these things called lives, I'm sure you can relate to not religiously looking at CPU prices for the past 5 years. So you might be surprised about how inexpensive AM4 CPUs have become. If you have a Ryzen 5 1600, 2600, or 3600, or a Ryzen 7 1700X, 2700X, or 3700X, some new games are starting to struggle to reach playable frame rates. Our recent video of Star Wars Jedi Survivor showed that all too well. Most games are tested in high or ultra detail, so you could squeeze some performance out of low detail if necessary. But that's kind of depressing to be forced to play at minimum detail in new games. Here's an example of just how much faster the 5700X in Spider-Man Remastered versus the Ryzen 5 1600X. This is 1080p high detail, and in both cases, the RTX 3090 Ti is heavily CPU bottlenecked, so you would still see a massive difference even with a mid-tier card, like an RTX 3070 or a 6700 XT. The Ryzen 7 5700X has outright doubled the average frame rate versus the 1600 X. This is a massive performance improvement that requires only a BIOS update and a 5 minute CPU upgrade. As the 5700X barely uses more power than the 1600X, you should be able to keep your existing CPU cooler. Even the 2700X, which is a newer generation with two more cores, the 5700X still has a 78% improvement, which is not double, but it's pretty darn close. That level of performance improvement is outstanding. If you learn anything from this video, it should be to strongly consider upgrading to at least a 5700X, as it completely changes your PC. Even the unimportant things you don't usually think about, like updating Windows, using Discord, listening to music on Spotify, watching YouTube videos, or using Microsoft Word or Excel, everything becomes quicker and more responsive, allowing you to concentrate on getting work done rather than worrying about how slowly your computer is operating. However, that's not the main focus of the video. It's the 5700X versus the 5800X 3D. Does the 5800X 3D beat the 5700X by enough to justify its price premium? The 5700X is displayed on the left hand side of the screen, and the 5800X 3D is displayed on the right side. The only difference between the test benches is the CPU. The RAM, graphics card, and Windows installation are all identical. The 5800X 3D averages 34 frames per second faster than the 5700X. However, because the 5700X already gives you 139 frames per second with a 1% low of 76, I would consider that good enough for a lot of people, even those with 144Hz monitors, which are fairly common these days. This is a 24% performance improvement, which is impressive considering that they are the same 8 Zen 3 cores with about the same clock speed and the only real difference is the 3D cache. At the time of filming, the 5700X is $190 and the 5800X 3D is $325.
which makes it 71% more expensive for 24% more performance. I don't know if there would be a scenario in which I would recommend spending that much money on that little performance. It is also worth considering that we're testing 1080p in high detail using an RTX 3090 Ti. If this were a 1440p test and we were using an RTX 3070, the GPU would become the limit and the difference would become unnoticeable. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see such a 1440p test and, if so, which GPU do you want to be tested on? There is no doubt the 5800X 3D is fast, however, that doesn't make it the best deal. And my dad did name this channel Tech Deals after all. The price difference is the primary issue we've had with the 3D chips. It is a very cool technology, but the price premium is not justified by the performance uplift outside of corner use cases and even then it's questionable. I would much rather save the money and buy the 5700X and put it into either the hip pocket national bank or put it towards a future upgrade because at this point your computer is four to six years old. And while the 5700X will breathe new life into it, it will still be due for replacement in the next year or so as storage and RAM requirements continue to increase and there are no reasonable CPU upgrades on the AM4 platform. And once you have to change the motherboard, you are effectively building an entirely new computer. It is worth noting that the power usage is almost identical between all of the Ryzen 7 CPUs. So the difference in performance is due to legitimate improvements to the CPU. AMD didn't just increase power consumption out of the wazoo like some other company would. Hitman 3 is another game that has the same story as Spider-Man Remastered. At 1080p high detail with a 3090 Ti, there's a 30% performance improvement between the 5700X and 5800X 3D, which in itself is impressive as they both have 8 cores. However, because the 5800X 3D is $325, 30% improvement for 70% more money simply isn't worth it. In fact, the 5800X 3D would have to become about $250 before it's worth discussing because then it would have the same performance for the money as the 5700X does. As the percentage difference between $190 and $250 is about 32%. However, even $250 might not be cheap enough for the next benchmarks we're going to discuss. Battlefield 2042 was tested using live servers and real people to see just how the CPUs performed in live gameplay. I had no issues playing the game with a 5700X with an average frame rate of 149 and a 1% low of 89. On the other hand, the 5800X 3D had an average of 185 frames per second with a 1% low of 101. So the increased average frame rate might be noticeable, but the 1% low only went up 13%, which makes spending another $130 a poor allocation of money. Switching to Far Cry 6, there was no improvement from the 1% low at all. So it doesn't matter if the average FPS went up, that just means a wider swing in the frame rate. The RTX 3090 doesn't practically make sense to pair with either CPU because almost every game was CPU bottlenecked to some degree. If you were looking for a GPU upgrade along with the CPU upgrade, I would think the RX 6800 is the best graphics card that makes reasonable sense because it has 16 gigs of VRAM and you can find them used for under $400 in good condition. The Ryzen 7 5700X achieved an average frame rate of 127 with a 1% low of 89, while the 5800X 3D achieved an average frame rate of 155 with a 1% low of 87, which we repeatedly ran but never managed a better result than that. In looking throughout our entire benchmark suite, there is not a single instance where the 3D chip comes close in price to performance. There are a lot of other things you could spend $130 on to improve the quality of life of your computer, such as more RAM, a second SSD, or maybe a third, or a GPU upgrade down the line. Not all of which you can do at the same time, those are just some alternatives. In addition, something I've noticed more and more frequently is that the background tasks use more CPU power than the actual game itself. And because the only real use of the extra cache is gaming, there's even less of a reason to spend the extra money on the 5800X 3D, as there is no advantage for normal everyday tasks. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit 
all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code Tech Deals using our link in the video description. We have used Ewin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with Ewin to bring you this special discount and recommend Ewin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs. Thank you all so much for watching. Two gold stars for all of you. Like the video, subscribe if you enjoy our content, and turn on notifications so you'll be notified when we publish a new video. Links to Newegg, Amazon, eBay, and more will be found in the video description below. Using our links supports our channel and it doesn't cost you a penny. Thanks for watching and maybe I'll see you in a future Tech Deals video. Bye!